morning, Anna Nicole Smithson, P7104, appearing on behalf of Mr. Miles for arraignment purposes only. I've had the opportunity. Or did you already call the case? Yeah, let me call the case, Counselor. Um, uh, take calling case number TKT 23TR00617. Sir, would you please put your name on the record? Cordero Miles. Okay. Uh, Counsel, how would you like to proceed at this time? Your Honor, I've had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Miles. I've advised him of his rights, the charge, the max penalty. We waive reading, stand mute, ask the court to enter a not guilty plea. In regard to Bond, he works full time at Fisher Dynamics. It's an excellent job. He's very excited about having it and um, really hopes to maintain it. He has three children, uh, no health issues. He does have a high school diploma. Uh, he, he acknowledges some criminal history, although there is no um, history of violence or assault in that criminal history. He's also working with Project Clean Slate to clean up some of that criminal history. I mean, he hasn't had any charges in about three years. Um, I, I say it like that because my math is never great on the record, so <laughs> my math could be a little bit off. But since I, I 2019. So we would ask for a personal bond in this matter. If the court's not inclined to give a personal bond, we would ask for a nominal cash surety 10% bond. Okay. Uh, counsel, before I, I, I go there, um, I'm looking at the address of the alleged incident at, I think it's Woody Drive, apartment 404. Would that be um, what you have as far as the uh, incident address? I'm not sure who lives there. It's a hotel. Well, That's a hotel? Do the, do the yeah, Detective Humphrey. Yes, go ahead, Detective. No, I, I just check. I'm Detective Youngcree, City Detroit Police Department. Um, yeah, that address is for a hotel. Um, the incident occurred there, so um, I don't know what Mr. Miles advised about his him and the other parties' living arrangements. So, but I just want to advise it was a hotel. The incident occurred. At. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you for that. I, I just want to clarify with counsel whether or not the. Uh, um, Mr. Miles and the other uh, party are living together at that address on Melbourne Street in Detroit, if that's the correct address I have for your client. The Melbourne, you Street, is, the Melbourne Street is a good address for Mr. Miles, and I apologize, I did not inquire whether the other party lived there. Does she live there, Mr. Miles? He indicated no, she does. Okay, give me one second then, Counselor. I just want to clarify one other thing. Bon, because it's, it's, the, the, the file is thick on this matter. From what I'm reading is that um, uh, the parties um, are working together at Fisher Dynamics. That's your understanding as well, Counselor? I don't want to talk directly to your client. I have them working together at an, at an address in and Fisher Dynamics, would you know whether or not that would be correct, Counselor? I didn't ask, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to issue a cash, um, a $5,000 uh, cash surety 10% bond in this in this matter, sir. Uh, you're going to need $500 to uh, be released. Um, part of the conditions for your release um, that you are not to have any contact. What is, let me get the name here, full name. You're not to have any contact with or go to her residence. Uh, Fisher Dynamic, you're not to have any contact with her at Fisher Dynamic, which is at I have some other condition, bond conditions that I want to run off to you. <clears throat> Make sure you appear personally for any court proceedings if in fact you bond out soon. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court and immediately notify the court in writing of any change of address or telephone number. I don't want you to possess any firearms or other dangerous weapons and pick up no new criminal offenses. Do you understand the uh, conditions, uh, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, counselor, uh, anything further from you? Uh, just that he's requesting court appointed counsel, Your Honor. Okay, thank you for that. I will um, grant point point, uh, court appointed counsel uh, going going forward uh, this particular time. I, I do, I do have a question. 
Go ahead. Um, since we work at the same place, are you saying I can't, sure you attend, I can't attend the job since we work at the same place, or basically we work at the same place and we just need to not have no contact? Well, how large is that business? Because I don't, I want to make sure it's that, it, it, is it possible? Let me say this, is it, is it, let me say this, is it possible, is it possible that you can be at that business and not have any contact with it? Yes, I can. Yes, it's three different buildings. It's a West building, West building, it's the Southwest building, and it's the main building. So it's three buildings. And what built, what built, uh, counselor, I just, well, I, I'm trying not to, so what building do counsel, what building does she work in and what building does, you, do you work in? I'm just trying to make sure that as I of, get make this. As of, as of Friday, we both work in the West Building. And how large is the West Building? Uh, Council, you want to chime in here? Um, Your Honor, it's my understanding it's a pretty, Fisher Dynamic is a substantial company and, and the campus is, is, I mean, it's right near her actually. Um, but I'm sure given the bond conditions, if you allow them to continue at the company, but not have contact with her while on the campus of the business, he could take the copy of the bond conditions, go to his employer, and they could um, redeploy him, so to speak, into another building on campus. Okay, so, so, all right, thank you, thank you for that. So, um, what I'm going to do is you're not to have, I'm not going to deny you from going to work. Um, okay, but thank you. you do need, to, but you do need to make arrangements when you get to work and talk with your employers. I want to separate you and have you in another building. Is that understood? That's understood. Okay, because I don't want you in the same building. I think you said it was three or four different buildings. Make sure you're in a separate building and not have any contact with her. Don't try to call her or text her or email or any of those type things or have anyone contact her on your behalf and you are not to go to her, her residence as well. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Okay, calling case number uh, Tom King, Tom 23TR00615. Um, Luma, I'm not predict, Lamia Ria, R-I-R-A. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, council appearance for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Nicole Smith, MP 71404, appearing on behalf of Mr. Ria for arraignment purposes only. Had the opportunity to speak with them, advise them of the charge, the max penalty, as well as his rights. We'd waive reading, stand mute, ask the court to enter in that guilty plea. In regard to Bond, um, he works at a, a local factory. I, he did give me the name. I just didn't write it down. Um, he works the night shift so that so that he can um, assist in caring for his autistic son during the day. Um, he has some heart issues. Um, he's not supposed to be under great stress. He's never been arrested. He's never had a charge. This is his first time. Um, he's planning on hiring counsel. I would ask for a personal bond. Um, he also would like to request, I explained there's gonna be a no contact to the home and a no contact with his daughter, who I believe is the alleged victim in this case. The daughter does live in the home with his wife and son. Um, there is a concern because he cares for the son. I understand why uh, the wife, like he works at night and then he assists the son during the day. And then the wife also works. Um, so he's concerned about who's gonna help with the son while she's working if he can't be in the home. I'm not sure if the court wanted to address that today with without her here when the daughter also lives in the home or wanted to leave that to, to pretrial when his retained counsel can address I'm going that. to do, and then I, I wanna get back to this counsel. I may have you state that again. I wanna make sure I have that clear. But uh, so, um, so I understand you're gonna be retaining counsel going forward. Is that correct? Was the question for me? You're going to be yeah. getting your own attorney going forward from here, right? You're going to hire yes. an attorney? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, issue a $5,000 cash surety 10% bond in this matter. You are not to have any contact with the uh, complaining witness. I believe, check the incident location. 
Um, the incident uh, location, I believe, is 20 not to return to that residence. I'm assuming that's the residence of yourself and where your daughter actually lives. You can go back there one time with a police escort uh, only just to retrieve some of your property while this case is pending. So one time police escort, you can return briefly to get some of your items. Other than that, you would not to have any contact with uh, the complaining witness, and which is, I believe, your daughter um, that I indicated. Uh, counselor, um, there was one other comment you had too before I continue or uh, reference this matter. So the, the daughter lives in the home. There's also a son who is autistic and Mr. Rhea cares for the son during, Mr. Rhea works the night shift. So he cares for the son during the day while his wife works. He's concerned that there isn't gonna be anyone to care for the son during the day while his wife works because he's not gonna be there in the home. He goes to school. Sometimes the school calls me, say your son having having issue crying, and I have to go grab him, you know, from school and bring him home and help him. Also, I, I take him from school every day at two o'clock, and I send my son an OT and a speech, which is like like therapy uh, clinic area. So my wife never she no, no never done this. Always been taken care by me because I was uh, you know the the father of I mean the the husband and the father of a family. So I, every day from Monday to Friday, I have to to go to school at two o'clock and take myself from school. And he leaves the school and I send him to, to speech and OT, which is clinic and helps his uh, progress for autism. And if my wife is gonna be able to do that because she, she doesn't wanna drive around and I feel guilty for myself because you're gonna stay home and he's gonna get the help he needs. So please, please, John, okay. help me, please. Okay, I'm not, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to prevent you from having contact with your son. My only concern is returning to that address. Now, if some arrangements can be made where you have to pick him up, take him to school, bring him back uh, home, um, I'm sure there's another, hopefully there's another family member that can assist you so that it doesn't take you to your home. I don't want you to end up at that residence where you could possibly violate the conditions of your bond and be at that home and get into a discussion with your daughter. So I'm hopeful that I don't want to disrupt what you need to do with your son. Judge, so frame time it is may this. be a situation. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. So sorry, it may be a sorry, situation, sorry. it may be a situation where you need to have another party assist you in getting access to your son. You can still pick your son up from school or wherever you have to pick him up from. But when it comes to bring him back to the house. You're going to have to at least, the very least, have somebody other than your daughter meet a, a, a block from your house to, so because I don't want you going back to the house with the possibility of getting into a discussion with your daughter at this time. So maybe someone could meet you a block from your house and you can okay. turn your son over to them and get them back to the house. So that's why I'll leave what that. About, so, yes. Yeah. What yeah, let me let me some, let me read up, let me read off the rest of the conditions and then I'll take your uh, take any any thoughts you have. Thanks. So as I indicated, five thousand dollar cash surety, ten percent bond. You are not to uh, return to the premises, Michigan. You are not to have any contact with your your daughter that I, I mentioned already. Um, you have to make sure you appear for any court proceedings in the future. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. You will notify the court in writing of any change of address. I don't want you to possess, possess any firearms during this period of time as well and pick up no new criminal activity. Counselor, I have nothing else before I'm asking your client any questions, but uh, sir, do you understand the conditions that I've read off to you? Yes, sir. Okay, but, uh, counselor, do, okay. Okay, counselor, do you have anything else question. at this time? No, okay, sir. okay. Um, I think your client has a question, so you go ahead with your question, sir. So my son leaves in the morning a bus, he goes in the bus, so leaves the home, a, a bus come pick up him from, from the home and send him to school. So at two o'clock, so I can go get him from school, send him to the, to the uh, facility for speech OT, but when I turn him home at 3.30, my wife, she's at work, she's not gonna be at home. So from 3.30 to four, like she leaves the work at like around 4.30. So it's about one hour. So should I, should I can I keep my can I keep the son with me and I return him home when my wife is home like around five o'clock? That's I said okay. 
Well, you're in possession of your son, and I can't tell you how long to, to spend time with your son once you pick him up. That's not an issue that this court is going to address. I just want to make sure that you aren't parked out in front of him. However you make those arrangements work is okay with the court. I just want to make sure that you don't return to that address back with your daughter. What I, so what otherwise, I, I have son. nothing. Uh, I have nothing. Um, I have nothing further at this time. Okay. So you you're free to knock on the door. They'll let you out of there. All right. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. We're all set. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. So here's the deal. You work out something with your wife. You can't have any contact with your daughter. And you you can't go to the house. So you can contact your wife, mm -hmm. but you cannot talk to her. So whatever arrangements you want to make with her, is fine. Right. But you do not talk to your daughter. And you do all. not go to the house. What about with, uh, so when I get to get my items for, for work? You something? call the police and Just we stand by. Calling and case number 2301198, City of Oak Park versus Mario Renard. Gregory, um, officer, would you please state your name for the record? Yes, Your Honor, Detective Dwayne Green. Okay, would you raise your right hand, please? <clears throat> Excuse me for one minute, grab something. Okay, do you solemnly swear uh, and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? Yes, I do. Okay, please state the facts. You may proceed. Yes, Your Honor. On January 28th at approximately 8.30 p.m., while on patrol in his fully marked patrol vehicle, Officer Dean observed a blue Hyundai disregard the red traffic signal westbound 10 mile at Coolidge. Officer Dean conducted a traffic stop on the vehicle and made contact with the driver identified as Mario Gregory. He <clears throat> Mario Gregory. While speaking with Gregory, Officer Dean detected the odor of intoxicants coming from Gregory. He also observed he had bloodshot, watery eyes and slurred his speech. Officer Dean had Gregory complete several sobriety tasks in which he failed the walk and turn and the one leg stand. Officer Dean advised Gregory of his PBT rights and Gregory provided a sample that registered 0.17. Gregory was arrested and placed in the backseat of the patrol vehicle. I would note Gregory was the lone occupant of the vehicle. Officer Dean ordered Monahan's towing to the scene to impound the vehicle. <clears throat> Officer Dean conducted an inventory search of the vehicle, and upon doing so, he discovered a 380 Taurus handgun beneath the driver's seat where Gregory was seated. seated. Officer Dean photographed the handgun prior to the removal and then secured the handgun as patrol vehicle. Gregory was transported to the station and read his chemical breath rights. He provided two samples of 0.15 and a second of 0.14. I would note Gregory had a suspended driver's license and was never issued a concealed pistol permit. Based on these facts, I respectfully actually signed a warrant for DWLS, OWI, and weapons carrying concealed. Okay. Uh, the court finds that the alleged crime was committed and there's probable cause to believe it's been committed uh, said offense. I will, in fact, issue the warrants uh, for the uh, counts one, two, and three in the uh, complaint warrant. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything further? Any uh, comments, all. any thoughts on bond uh, from your position? I'll uh, just any? leave it at the court's discretion, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much, officer. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Good morning, Aaron. And Nicole Smithson, P71404, appearing on behalf of Mr. Gregory for arraignment purposes only. I've had the opportunity yeah, to. Mr. Speak Greg, Mr. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mr. Gregory, would you put your state your name for the record, please? Uh, Mario Gregory. Okay, thank you. Uh, counsel, how would you like to proceed? I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Gregory, advise him of the three count warrant, the max penalty for all of the charges, his rights. Read waive reading, uh, stand mute, ask the court to enter not guilty, please. He is requesting court appointed counsel. He's 31 years old. He has two children. He does report some um, anxiety issues. He has an older um, record from out of state, nothing. Um, assaultive, nothing involving weapons. Um, it's really all substance abuse related. For that reason, we would ask, and as this one is with the operating while intoxicated, uh, we would ask for a nominal uh, cash surety 10% bond with the appropriate testing conditions. Um, for Mr. Gregory going forward, I did read over the uh, allegations. Um, I did have some concern about some of the things that I saw in here. I'm going to issue a $20,000 cash surety 10% bond in this matter. 
with, the, like I said, with the 10% provision that I'm going to read off for you, Mr. Gregory. I just want to make sure you understand those conditions. Um, <clears throat> you're not to um, have any, uh, uh, not that there's an issue in this case, but you may not intimidate or threaten any witnesses in these proceedings uh, that have to do with this case. You need to appear personally for all court proceedings. Uh, do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. Immediately notify the court in writing if you have a change of address or change of phone number. You will not possess any firearms or other dangerous weapons. You shall restrain from using alcohol, any form of THC, marijuana, legal drugs, or abuse, abuse medication at all. Um, you will submit to a PBT, your, your, uh, your analysis of on request. What I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to just schedule you uh, to test two times per week for alcohol and drugs. want you to contact pretrial services upon your release. Within 24 hours of your release, you need to contact pretrial services here at the court and pick up no new criminal activities. Um, I'm scheduling your um, probable cause conference for February 6 of 2023 at nine o'clock a.m. And your exam will be scheduled for February 13th of 2023 at nine o'clock a.m. Um, sir, do you understand um, the conditions that I've read off to you? Yes, sir. You will get it. Okay. And you will get a, uh, a copy of this as, as well. So that includes testing twice a week and random testing as well. Um, anything further, uh, Counselor? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Grab your stuff. Yep. Please. Uh, Detective Michael DeBano with Waterford Township Police. Okay, calling case number 23-01199. Officer, would you raise your right hand, please? Swear and affirm that the, uh, that the testimony you're about to give is true to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Okay, you may proceed with the facts. On January 27, 2023, officers responded to domestic Dispatch advised that the complainant called, uh, stated that she was assaulted by her living boyfriend, Matthew Smith. Officers arrived on scene and spoke with Kalyani. Kalyani stated that Matthew had returned home from drinking at the bar and the two began to argue. During the argument, Kalyani stated that Matthew had grabbed her and slammed her head against something in the bedroom. Kalyani also stated that Matthew had broken her phone while she was attempting to call 911. Officers did observe visible injuries on Kalyani and they also observed the broken cell phone. Officers also spoke with Matthew, who stated the two had a verbal argument. Matthew denied assaulting Kalyani and also denied breaking her cell phone. Matthew was arrested for domestic violence, booked, and then lodged at the Oakland County Jail. I presented this case to the Oakland County Prosecuting Office, where a complaint of domestic violence and interference with 911 was authored against Matthew. Okay. Um, my court does find that the alleged crime was 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 committed in probable cause to believe that the defendant committed the said offense. Any uh, comments, uh, officer, detective, that you want to make uh, as it relates to bond before I move forward uh, later on? No, I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. I will I will issue the warrant in this matter. All right, thank you. Have a good afternoon. All right. Council, I have two files. State your name for the record, please, Council. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Nicole Smith, MP71404, appearing on behalf okay, of Ms. Let me call out the... Your Honor, I appear for arraignment purposes on both matters only, or arraignment purposes only on both matters. On 23-01192, we would waive reading, stand mute, ask the court to enter a not guilty plea. She is requesting court-appointed counsel in regard to bond. Um, to be very clear, the alleged victim does not reside with her. He resides here in Oakland County, and Miss White Lyons resides in Wayne County. Full time employment. She is a 30 year old mother of two. Uh, she is uh, from Oakland, though. Uh, she has no assaultive history. She is minimal, very minimal. Uh, 
criminal record and hardly even call it a criminal record, frankly, no prior failure to appear history. Um, and frankly, her record is, is very old, as you can see from the 2010 um, case. And moving to the 2010 case, uh, I would also waive reading stand mute, ask the court to enter a not guilty plea. We'd ask the court to recall the bench warrant to reset the show cause hearing. Um, I would remind the court of the Supreme Court administrative order that states that we are not to incarcerate people on fines and costs only. And it's very clear that in this 2010 case, it is a fines and costs only matter. Um, she needs to work on her payment plan. Again, it looks like there were efforts made in this case to do a payment plan and she has made some payments throughout the case on it. Um, so I would ask for a personal bond on the 2010 case and frankly a personal bond in the 20, in the case in the 50th too. Like the older matter case, um, uh, that's one that from the 3683, 10-00-3683, um, this case being so old, I just had some concerns. Uh, I just had some concerns, Counselor, uh, on that matter. Like it's 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 been a long time, and uh, I I just need to make sure that um, that she's going to uh, appear because we are now 13 years um, 13 years past uh, past the date here that this case kind of originated. So I had some concerns there, um, and and based on my concerns, I'm going to um, short. Uh, cash surety bond, $993 cash surety bond in that matter. Um, as it relates to the 20, um, well, as it relates to the, uh, let, me, let me run the conditions on that case first before I move forward. Uh, on that case, um, defendant will personally appear for all court proceedings, will not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court, will immediately notify the court in writing of any change of address or telephone number. Um, and pick up no new criminal offenses in this particular case. Uh, Ma'am, do you understand those bond conditions I just read off to you? Yes, I do. Okay, let me move to the 23-01192 case. Court, court, court appointed counsel for you on both these files as well. Um, counsel, anything you'd like to address on bond on theirs? I'm sorry, I, didn't, I don't know if I remember asking you that on this particular case. Um, I think you indicated the possible personal recognizance bond on this. I did, Your Honor, um, okay. and that is because he does not live with her. She has no assaultive history. Um, she lives a county away. She has such a minimal record. I mean, it's, uh, I believe it's a false report of a misdemeanor, which is the case we were just discussing from 2010, 13 years ago. And I think maybe a DWLS or something to that effect is her only other charge. And, you know, given that and given the presumption that everyone is supposed to be getting personal bonds unless the court can find a reason that there's such a risk to the community and um i, I believe a personal bond is, uh, is appropriate I'm assuming uh, if you reside with that party you are not allowed to go to his residence i have listed as a resident of a possible to what i um have as the uh, address of the incident. I'm not sure where the other party lives right now, other than that this is the last address I have. So therefore you are not to return to that address or any other address um, where the party lives. That would be uh, Anton Dixon. You're not to have any contact with uh, Antonia, Antonia Dixon, A-N-T-O-I-N-E Dixon. No contact with that with that person or going back to that location. Um, I'm going to cut the bond down a little bit. I, uh, because of the nature of the offense, um, uh, uh, having some violent tendencies, I'm still going to reduce, I'm going to reduce your bond down. It's going to be a $3,000 cash surety, 10% on that, only because of the nature of the offense. And I have some concerns uh, uh, as it relates to that. Um, other than that, um, your conditions are going to uh, include no contact or direct or indirect contact with Anton Dixon. Uh, you will not return to the premises where he lives and or 28 number two. 
Uh, you will not assault, beat, molest, or verbally harass or intimidate or threaten anyone in this case. Appear for all court proceedings. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. Uh, notify the court immediately in writing if you should change your address or telephone number. Do not possess any firearms and pick up no new criminal offenses in this matter. Do you understand, uh, ma'am, your bond conditions? Yes, I do. Okay, you will Can be given an additional date to appear in you will be given an additional date to appear in court. We don't have a date for you, um, but you will get uh, an additional date to appear in court on both these matters. Anything further, counsel? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much. Can have I you all said you, you have, if you have a question, go right ahead. Um, yes, the the date, the um, incident location, that's my best friend's house. He ran into my best friend's house, so I can't go there. Like I can't visit. Does he does, does does he does he live there or the? He doesn't live there. He lives with his mother. I don't know where him his mother live, but that's okay. my best. Okay, I will I will take that condition off. But my other conditions, as far as you having any contact with him whatsoever, phone, email, text, you name it, no contact. Wherever his current location is, you are not to go to that address at all or his place of employment. You understand that. Yes. Okay, I have three files on uh, Mr. Coach calling case number 18000346. Council appearance for the record. There should be four files. Good afternoon, Nicole Smith, MP71404, appearing on behalf of Mr. Coates for arraignment purposes only. Had the opportunity to speak with them, advise them of his rights, the charge, the max penalty. We'd waive reading, stand mute, ask the court to enter a not guilty plea, and recall the warrant. Uh, on this one, he is, um, one second. He is currently unemployed. He was involved in a significant motor vehicle accident that has resulted in a lot of health issues. So he goes to physical therapy every day. He also has um, three children and he reports that these four cases are his only criminal matters. Okay. Okay, counsel, based upon the, uh, all these complaints that I have in front of me are old complaints and, and, and based upon the duration and time has passed, um, I need to assure um, uh, that Mr. Coates is going to appear for these matters. I have some concern and since he hasn't appeared in over 18, and over five, six years on this particular file, as well as the others, which some are even longer. Um, cash surety bond in the amount of 300, uh, um, cash surety no 10%, the amount of $392 in this particular matter. Um, and I would adapt what I said at the, for the last case sure. in regard to Mr. Coates and his, bond. well, I guess, strike that. Um, in regard to bond, he's unemployed. Um, he has significant health issues. He's in physical therapy every day. He has three children. Uh, these are his only cases. I know it's a 2017 case um, and the court would obviously have some concerns regarding that. We would ask for a nominal cash surety 10% bond. Okay, thank you, counsel. <clears throat> um, again, it's an old case back from 2017. I have some concerns about uh, his, his appearance. I wanna make sure he appears for, for court. I'm gonna issue a $2,000 cash surety bond, uh, no 10% in this matter. Um, if I um, if I get I my just want, yeah, hold on a second. I I don't want to want you to say anything yet until we get through this. So let me go through this. So I need you to appear for uh, all your court proceedings. Not leave the state of Michigan without permission. Immediately notify the court in writing if you change your address or phone number. Um, I want you to contact the uh, fifty two three bond compliance unit within twenty four hours of your. Um, release on this particular case. That's in Rochester Hills. Make sure you contact them if you should get out within 24 hours and pick up no new criminal offenses. Um, do you understand your, your bond conditions there, sir? Yes, sir. I feel like they're a little bit harsh, okay. man. Like I said, if, uh, if you could just yeah. cut me some slack and, give, and yeah. give me some tips. You're going to be, yeah, I understand, sir. You're going to be in court very shortly once you get a court date. And every time you appear for court, you have an opportunity uh, with counsel to address bond again. Um, and hopefully it may get lowered for you at that particular time. In this matter, uh, there was a failure to, to appear for sentencing. We'd ask the court to reset the sentencing. And in regard to, in regard to bond, we would ask, um, adopting the previous argument, 
the last matter uh, for a nominal cash surety 10% bond. Thank you, Council. Uh, again, this case is dates back to 2019. The court has some concerns, wants to make sure that you are going to appear. But this case is very, very old. Um, therefore, I'm going to, um, in this particular case, I ended up being not guilty. Uh, client stands mute. Um, $5,000 uh, cash surety bond or 10% in this particular matter. Anything further, counsel? No, Your Honor. Okay, uh, moving to case 19-002721. Uh, Mr. Coates, put your name on the record again, just for this case as well. Mario King Coates. Okay, counsel, you may proceed. Okay, thank you, counsel. Um, if there's any warrants, I recall any warrants on this particular file. An issue, a uh, bond of 2,500 cash surety, 10% uh, on this particular uh, file. Similar conditions, sir. Make sure you appear for in, in court personally. Um, do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. Please notify the court immediately in writing any change of address or phone number. Uh, make sure you contact again the bond compliance unit at 52-4 District Court within 24 hours of your release and pick up no new criminal uh, criminal offenses. Uh, you understand the, the conditions of that bond as well? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Do I have an opportunity to speak or do I not? Yeah, you can speak right now. Go ahead. Um, just be careful what you say. I don't want you to say anything that's that can be used later so i just want to make sure you understand that i don't uh, if i don't jump in your your attorney will but yes you feel free to ask any questions you want right now okay thank you i have two questions that are very simple uh the one that you said that was no 10 percent uh i just want to tell you that my father is an amputee and um my cases are uh closing out pretty soon as far as the settlement so i, I i'm looking to uh basically just pay all my fines and costs up, you know what I'm saying? Get everything, my uh, record clean and everything. And I understand the severity of, uh, you know, all my cases and my responsibilities. I have three daughters and, um, you know, I'm basically the, the man of the household. So I have to take care, you know, my responsibilities and the things that I have done in the past. Um, and- Okay. As far as uh, the charges, and my second thing, my second thing is the, as far as the charges that were that I was bought here with with uh, are those like what are what is going on with those are those not okay did, let me let me just say let me just say this to you um, you had four files here before me today I set uh, bond conditions in all those files you will be back in court shortly um, they're going to schedule a court date for you you'll get that court date uh, before you leave. And once you get to court, because the court wants to see, they haven't seen you in five, six, seven years on some of these files, five, six years. So the court wants to see you. Once you see, once you get back to court, make sure you, your attorney will assist you again in, in, in discussing bond and bringing this up. But as of right now, they want to see you because these files are so old. So once you get to court the next time, address those issues there, okay? Okay, so. Um, All right. So I'll... you're going to be given a court date. You'll be given a court date before you leave. Okay, and then the second thing was the, the charges that were brought up today that have brought me that originally bought me here today or yeah we are deal, I, we don't have to yeah we don't have to deal with those we're just only dealing with getting you back on track that's why you were arraigned on these charges so anything you need to discuss I just don't want you to say too much right now about the about the case itself so um, I'm just gonna kind of cut you off because I don't want you to say anything damaging to yourself right now okay all right all right just knock on the door behind you and they'll let you out. Hold on one second here. No problem. Council appearance for the record. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Nicole Smithson, P71404, appearing on behalf of Mr. Gar Gordon for arraignment purposes only. Had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Gordon, advise him of the charge, his rights, the max penalty. We'd waive reading, stand mute, ask the court to enter um, a not guilty plea. He is requesting court appointed okay. counsel in regard to bond. He works full time at Gardner White. He has two children, no health conditions. Uh, the reason he has not availed himself of the court earlier is because he was not aware of this warrant. He never received any notice. He has no record. Um, this would be the only thing. Uh, so we would ask for a personal bond. Um, this case goes back quite a number of years, uh, eight years to be exact. Um, 
that had the court wants to make sure that your appearances that you will appear in court. So I'm going to put a cash bond of three hundred and twenty dollars, uh, no ten percent on this particular case. Um, I have some other conditions for you, sir. Um, make sure you appear personally for any court appearances and any court proceedings. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. And make sure you immediately notify the court in writing of any change of address. Uh, are you sir. still living on Tilden Avenue in no, Waterford? Sir. No, sir. Okay, what's, what's your address? As I indicated, uh, and pick up no new criminal offenses. Um, no, okay, counsel, anything further? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, you, do you understand the bond conditions as I've read them off to you? Yeah, you said a uh, 300 bond with, with no 10%? Yeah, that's right, $320 uh, cash surety, no 10%. So $320. Okay. Um, can I ask a question, yes. sir? Um, sure. Just make sure it's something you should be asking the court because we're on the record and it's not something you want to talk about. Maybe something with your attorney at your next hearing. So I just want to give you okay, a heads I'm, up on. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me interrupt you. Okay. No, no problem. I just want to make sure you're okay. Yeah. Um, I just had a question about the, the bond and the person. Sure. person. Okay, uh, what's your question about the, the bond? We just addressed that. What, what other questions did you have? You don't need $320? Uh, is there another currently... question you have? No, no other questions, sir. Okay, then you're all set then. If you have no more questions, you're all set. Just knock on the door behind you, okay? Okay, um, so I will have to have someone come up here and pay the 300 or just? Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, 320 uh, cash surety. So, um, you know, the court will let you, the deputies will let you know either someone, uh, cash surety, uh, bail bondsman, or someone to pay that amount. Okay. So you have a couple options there to you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Knock on the door behind you. They'll let you out. Sir, would you state your name for the record? Yes, it's Matthew Smith. Okay. Calling case number 23-01199. Nine, Matthew James Smith, counsel appearance. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Nicole Smith, MP 71404, appearing on behalf of Mr. Smith for arraignment purposes only. I've had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Smith, advise him of the two count warrant, the maximum penalty, as well as his rights. We'd waive reading, stand mute, ask the court to enter a not guilty plea in regards to bond. Um, he, oh, and he is requesting court appointed counsel, if I didn't mention that. Um, in regard to bond, he is 29 years old. He has three children. Um, he has finished high school, some college. He's a union pipe fitter. Uh, he has absolutely no criminal history, no prior failure to appear history because he has no criminal history. This is his first arrest, first charge ever. The alleged victim is his longtime partner and the mother of his three children. So I've explained that there will be a no contact. Uh, we are asking for a third party child exchange provision. And of course, a one-time return uh, provision as well with law enforcement so that he can get uh, his belongings. Uh, there's no use of marijuana or Ill illegal drugs were reported to be involved in this either. Uh, we are asking for a personal bond given that there is the presumption that personal bonds are always appropriate. And um, I believe uh, that that is it. Okay, thank you. Um, looking at the nature of the offense, um, there's, there's two counts here. Um, one's, one, one count is a, a felony. Uh, due to the allegations as, as it relates to the nature of the offense, uh, having some tendency as it relates to the allegation to be of a violent nature, um, I'm going to Said a $20,000 uh, uh, cash surety bond, 10% on this matter. I have some other conditions that I want to read off, um, which includes you are not to have any contact. Um, I believe this is your wife. I'm not sure K K Kayla have any contact with this person. However, um, you cannot return to 150 that address. You will be allowed to go back to that address one time and one time only with a police escort. 
to pick up some of your clothing items um, until this case has uh, run its course and been resolved. Um, you shall not uh, assault, beat, molest, or verbally harass or intimidate and threaten any complaining witness in this matter. You need to appear personally for any court proceedings. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court and notify the court immediately in writing if you change your address or phone number. Make sure you do that immediately because we won't know where you're at because you will not be back at the do not possess uh, any firearms or other dangerous weapons. Uh, once you're released, you're going to have to contact the pretrial services um, within 24 um, within 24 hours of your release in this matter, and pick up no new criminal activity. Do you understand your bond conditions, sir? What I've read off to you. Do you understand what I've read off to you? Yes, but I cannot afford that. Okay. Thousand uh, dollars in I, okay. <laughs> You're going to need two thousand dollars to get out because I put a ten percent, uh, a ten percent uh, on it. So twenty thousand cash, surely ten percent. Council, anything further from you? Sir, I, I, no, I support. I, I support yeah. all three kids yeah. and my ex. I, I, it's, I'm going to lose my job over this. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I don't want you to say too much. I'm going to stop you. I don't want you to say too much because I, I just want to make sure you understood and you don't have any questions that relates to that. I don't want you to say anything that may, um, you know, be detrimental to you going forward. So um, I'm just going to leave it at that and knock on the door behind you and they'll let you out. Okay. I just, I'm trying to keep you from saying things because this is a, this is a public record. I don't want you to say anything about the case. So I'm trying to keep you from saying that. Okay. So knock on the door behind you and they'll let you out. And you'll be given, let me give you, I'll give you your court dates now, and you'll be given a, a notice of when to appear. You, you're going to have a, um, a uh, probable cause conference, which is scheduled for February 6th of 2023, and a uh, exam scheduled um, for 213 of 2023. Both of those are going to be scheduled for nine o'clock. So your next date in court is February 6th. And that'll be for your probable cause conference. Anything you want to discuss then about bond, you can always bring it up then at that next court date. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Yep. Here.